So I'm going to be talking about the very general exploration strategy for multi bandits. In fact, so general it can be easily applied to neural networks. And to kind of justify this strategy, we'll kind of step back and analyze it in arguably the simple structured bandit problem, which is a linear bandit. Uh, this is a joint work with my colleagues, uh, Chaba, who is at DeepMind, Mohamed Gavamzadeh, who is at Facebook, and Craig Boutelier, who is, again, at Google. So let me just give you a quick introduction to a multi -amp bandits. Uh, multi -amp bandits are essentially a framework for sequential decision making under certainty where the learning agent pulls k arms in n rounds. And in particular, in round t, the agent pulls one arm, will be denoted by i sub t, and then receives its reward. In this talk, we'll be looking at stochastic multi -amp bandits, uh, and we'll be assuming that the reward of arm i in round t is drawn iid from some distribution of that arm, which has a mean mu sub i, and we'll also make a simplifying assumption that the rewards are bounded on zero one. The goal of the learning agent will be to maximize its expected and round reward, in some sense to learn the best arm as quickly as possible. And this problem is challenging because the agent doesn't know the expected rewards of the arms in advance, so it has to explore by playing arms. And once you learn the best arm, you want to exploit it uh, for as long as possible. Uh, multi arm bandits have many applications. Uh, out of the ones that I can think at Google, they are used in advertising, they are used in YouTube for uh, learning to rank, and they are used widely for hyperparameter tuning of uh, learning algorithms. A uh, linear bandit is uh, arguably the simplest structured uh, bandit problem, and it's really just a multi arm bandit where the expected reward of arm i uh, is a dot product of a known feature vector of this arm, x sub i. And an, unknown and an unknown parameter vector theta star. And a good way of thinking of these feature vectors and parameter vectors is that they live in some d-dimensional space. So I'm showing a two-dimensional space here on the slide. Uh, the feature vectors are blue, uh, the parameter vector is black, and the arm with the highest expected reward is simply the one which has the feature vector, which has the highest dot product with the parameter vector. So it's the one which is uh, at the very bottom. Uh, we'll assume that uh, arm one is optimal uh, without loss of generality, and we maximize the expected n around reward, which is equivalent to minimizing the expected n around regret, which is really nothing else, just the sum of the cumulative losses uh, due to the playing suboptimal arms instead of the optimal arm. A little bit of a little bit more notation. So in the rest of the talk, I'll denote by capital X sub T the feature vector of the pulled arm in round T, and by capital Y sub T uh, the stochastic reward of this uh, pulled arm. Uh, we have many algorithms uh, for linear bandits. Uh, for instance, uh, in upper confidence bound algorithms, the learning agent just tracks the high probability confidence region around the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameters of the linear model. So let me know this uh, high probability confidence region by C sub T. Then what you do in round T, you simply pull the arm, uh, which has the highest dot product of the feature vector of that arm uh, with any parameter vector uh, within this uh, high probability uh, confidence region. Uh, we know that uh, upper confidence bound algorithms and linear bandits are computationally efficient. They tend near optimal regret. So we have another class of algorithms, uh, which are based on uh, Thomson sampling. In Thomson sampling, uh, you compute the maximum likelihood estimate in round T, and then you perturb it. So what you essentially do instead of playing the, the instead of acting optimist, act, instead of acting with respect to the maximum likelihood estimate, you sample the perturbed estimate from a normal distribution, which is centered in the maximum likelihood estimate, and the covariance distribution of this normal distribution is just the inverse of the sample covariance matrix uh, that you have. Again, uh, then you pull the arm, which is the highest dot product between the sampled parameter vector and the feature vector. And we again know that linear Thomson sampling algorithms are both computational efficient and they attain near optimal regret. So you might be asking me, so what am I doing here talking about linear bandits? Uh, so the problem with these upper confidence bound and Thomson sampling designs is they are very hard to generalize uh, to complex problems. So let me just recap. Uh, if we look at upper confidence bound designs, we understand them well in multi-armed and linear bandits. They are often too conservative in practice, especially how we apply them to structured problems. And we don't have general algorithms. Like if I think of low rank problems or neural networks, it's very hard f f for me to even think how would I design the algorithm, not even about analyzing it. If you look at Thomson sampling, again, we understand it very well in multi-armed bandits and in linear bandits. 
it's typically less conservative in practice. So people like to apply Thomson sampling algorithms in practice for exactly this reason. You could argue that any model has a posterior, uh, so you can implement uh, Thomson sampling. Uh, but the problem is that this posterior doesn't have a closed form. It's very hard to represent it computationally efficiently. And what is even a bigger issue, it's hard to approximate it efficiently. So although in principle we can design Thomson sampling algorithms for everything, it's very hard to think of how to really implement them. So what do we do in this work? Uh, we propose a very simple perturbation strategy, which is extremely general and it's very easy to implement. And it's really motivated by the following observation. If I wanted to do reward maximizing online learning and I didn't want to do any observation, the most natural thing to do is the following. I take the past observation, which are the feature vectors X with the corresponding rewards. I per pass them through a maximum likelihood estimator for the reward generalization model in a given domain. And then I play the arm with the highest expected reward. Of course, this will often not work in practice because I don't do any exploration. So to do exploration will be just perturbing the training data which go into this maximum likelihood estimator. And one particular way that we propose uh, to perturb this training data in this work is that for every observation, so meaning a pair of the feature vector and the reward, we'll add to the training data A copies, and A is a tunable parameters, of this feature vector and a randomized reward. Now it's very important that these randomized rewards have high variance, and they have to be generated freshly in each round, which potentially is computationally expensive, and I'll be talking about this later. Then you pass it through the maximum likelihood estimator, which ties everything together based on the structure of the problem, and then you will pull the arm with the, with the highest reward under this reward generalization model, which was spit out by this maximum likelihood estimator. So let's just step back to a linear bandit and talk about how we can implement this in a linear bandit. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, so at the beginning of each round, we will generate A times T minus one uh, randomized rewards. And because we are looking at the linear bandit where the rewards are bounded on zero one, and we want high variance uh, noise, it's natural to think, well, what is the maximum variance random variable that's a Bernoulli one half? So we'll be generating these pseudo rewards, uh, which are Bernoulli one half. Then we uh, compute the part of maximum likelihood estimator. And this is very similar to the maximum likelihood estimator, except for the just uh, learning a regression model with the original rewards. We'll be adding to each of the original rewards the sum of, it, of its perturb rewards. And if you look at the sample covariance matrix, you'll multiply it by A plus one because you added A extra observations for every observation that you had thus far. And then what you do, you will pull the arm with the highest expected reward under this perturb model. So let me just go back a little bit to this algorithm. Uh, so obviously this algorithm doesn't seem to be computationally efficient because in each round we generate a noise which is proportional to the index of this round, right? So over time, this algorithm will be worse and worse. So the good thing is that if you have a finite arm linear bandit, this algorithm can be implemented computationally efficiently. In particular, you can look at the perturb maximum likelihood estimator and you can rewrite the sum over the history of the algorithm simply as a sum over the individual arms. And now instead of the individual rewards, you will have just the sum of the rewards for each of the arms. And instead of the individual perturbed rewards, you will have perturbed rewards for each of the arms. Now the individual rewards can be tracked incrementally. You just create a counter and you will be counting the cumulative sum of the rewards for each arm. The sample covariance matrix can be updated incrementally. Whenever you play an arm with feature vector X, you add to the sample covariance matrix X times X transpose. Now the last thing is, well, can we generate the sum of the pseudo rewards uh, computationally efficiently? And now we simply use the observation that if you look at the sum of Bernoulli random variables with the same mean, that's a binomial random variable. So simply in each round, you can implement this algorithm in this way, in this way efficiently. The second thing is, well, why does this algorithm even work? So let me just first give you kind of very high level justification. You can think of it as follows, because we add randomized training data to the algorithm and it's always a new randomized training data in each round that creates a lot of variance in the estimate of the linear function that we have. And ultimately that variance will be sufficient for exploration. The second thing is because we add these randomized rewards to the training set, we create biases. Uh, but in a linear model, it turns out these biases do not matter. What ultimately happens, because we add these randomized training data, all the rewards get pushed up, and the slope of the linear function slightly changes. 
but it doesn't change in a way that changes the optimal arm. So the optimal arm under this perturbed model that we are estimating is the same as in the original model. Now, ultimately, this leads to, leads to kind of a regular bounds that you can prove. So you can show that under very mild condition, uh, this algorithm has the regret which scales, uh, which is d times square root of n, where d is the number of features, and n is the horizon. So you essentially match the regret bounds of linear Thomson sampling, the linear UCB. So there is really no improvement in the theory. Uh, but later on, you will see there is a lot of improvement in practice. And it's a very general algorithm, so now you can kind of think of, well, this is how I could kind of come up with algorithms for more complex models, although you cannot prove anything. So there are several nice uh, ideas in the proof. Uh, first, we provide kind of a very general analysis for any randomized linear model-based algorithm. And then we simply instantiate uh, this algorithm that I presented here as a very special case of this analysis. Now, to instantiate it, you really need to characterize the behavior of this perturbation of this noise that we are adding to the algorithm. Uh, you need to talk about concentration of these uh, weighted, of a weighted sum of Bernoulli random variables. That is not that hard because that this is obviously sub-Gaussian. Uh, Anti-concentration is much harder because a weighted sum of Bernoulli random variables doesn't have a close form. And we have here some nice ideas in the proof where we simply relate the variance of the random variable to the lower bound on the, on, on the tail of, of this variable. And that's what we essentially use later in the proofs. So the benefit of uh, this kind of perturbation strategy is it's extremely general. So if you want to apply it to a logistic bandit, uh, rewards are again on zero one. So nothing changes about the pseudo rewards. Instead of computing the maximum likelihood estimator of a linear model, you just use a maximum likelihood estimator for the logistic model. And then you pull the arm which has the highest dot product between the feature vector and your estimated uh, parameter vector. Again, uh, because uh, generalized linear models have very similar structure to linear models, you can write down these optimization problems uh, computationally efficiently, so the computation will not be growing uh, uh, linearly with time. Uh, to kind of validate uh, these algorithms, we have done two sets of experiments in the paper. Uh, there are experiments on linear bandits and logistic bandits. In linear bandits, we kind of choose 100 random problems with 100 arms. And then we compare our algorithm to upper confidence bound designs, Thomson sampling, and epsilon greedy policy with linear generalization and 5% exploration. And the reason for the epsilon greedy policy is that it's really the closest competitor to our, to our method. If you think about it, epsilon greedy policy is extremely general. Uh, that's great benefit. The problem is you have to be tuning the, the exploration parameter. In our method, there is a very simple setting of these parameters which works well in practice. So typically, uh, when we look at the experiment, so on the x-axis, you see the round. On the y-axis, you see the regret. Uh, we see that we outperform generally the upper confidence bound methods that are known to be conservative. Now, if we set the number of pseudo rewards that we generate randomly uh, to one pseudo reward for each pass observation, uh, we get a comparable performance to a linear Thomson sampling. And there is a large portion of the paper which is devoted to kind of justifying why this is actually a, a reasonable choice. Now, the good thing is that we can further tune our method. We can reduce the number of randomized pseudo-observations. Instead of just using one, you can use one half. So for each two observations, you use one pseudo-rewards. Typically, in practice, you don't see much of a decline in the performance. Of course, if you push it too much, you do. But you can further tune the method and outperform linear Thomson sampling. And another benefit of the method is a lower runtime. Uh, in linear Thomson sampling, uh, if you have a d-dimensional problem, you sample from uh, d-dimensional Gaussian distributions. Uh, here, we don't have to do any of that. We simply sample from, uh, as, from k multinomials, if you have k arms, and then compute the maximum likelihood estimate. So again, there are results in the paper on a logistic bandit. Again, 100 random problems with 100 arms, and you essentially observe the same trend. So if we have one pseudo reward for one real observations, you get comparable performance to Thomson sampling. You can further outperform it. And generally, you have uh, one half to one third of the runtime of Thomson sampling algorithms. 
So this work is related to several lines of work that appear in the literature over the past 10 years. So if you think of the algorithm and you are familiar with the online learning literature, it is like follow the perturb leader algorithm. Unfortunately, follow the perturb leader algorithms were mostly analyzed in online setting. Uh, there is very little work on the bandit setting. In the stochastic setting, uh, we have a paper at IH guy, uh, where which use, uh, uses as a looks at the Kham bandit and kind of provides the first gap-dependent analysis uh, for these uh, type of algorithms. And in the non-stochastic setting, there is a gap-free analysis, which is due to Noem Bartok from 2013. Unfortunately, this algorithm, it's very hard to generalize to linear bandit, or we couldn't find any way of generalizing it, and therefore we don't compare to it. Uh, you can think of randomization in many ways. Uh, we simply added here a kind of a fake training data into the training set of the maximum likelihood estimator, and then we, uh, but you can, you can add noise in many other different ways. You can just take the observations that the learning algorithm had and just perturb the reward of those observations in each round. And this edited noise exploration, they've been explored in several papers by the group of Ben Monroy, who is at Stanford. It's kind of a different perturbation mechanism. You can show in a linear bandit that if this noise is Gaussian, this is in fact equivalent to Thomson sampling. So there is not much new insight that you would get in a linear bandit. And what we show in this work, in fact, that there is a much larger class of perturbation that works. And then uh, there is a lot of work on bootstrapping exploration, which I became uh, very fond of. Uh, you simply explore by resampling the history of the learning agent and then fitting the maximum likelihood estimator. And again, these methods perform extremely well in practice. And until this year, there were no regret guarantees. So we had a paper at ICML where we provide the first regret guarantees for resampling the history of the learning agent and then fitting the maximum likelihood estimator. So uh, we are almost at the end. So th the main message is, uh, I think the randomization rocks. And it's something that is kind of underused in the bandit community. You can think of perturbing the history of the learning agent in many ways. And that allows you to debias yourself from the past and ultimately to explore. Here I just talked about one particular method, which is based on adding randomized training data into the, into the maximum likelihood estimator. It's very general, which is one great benefit. Uh, you can still analyze it in special cases, very similar to other methods that we, well know, that we know and love, uh, like linear bandits. And it, we can have computationally efficient implementation of these algorithms in linear and generalized linear bandits, and also competitive or even better, better empirical performance. So we've been looking uh, at the kind of uh, applying these algorithms essentially across the board. So we are looking at analyzing generalized linear bandits, uh, the algorithm works very well with deep learning. So, and there are many tricks that you can apply to make them even more computational efficient. So we are also looking at how to analyze bandit algorithms much more generally in this setting. And then reinforcement learning and kind of structured problems where I think many of the current methods uh, fail. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope... <laughs> <laughs>